people that I consider hackers are almost kind of like magicians. You know, it's like um, you you see something and um, and you're like, oh, how can I do something totally different? You know, that really makes people think and like you know um, where uh, it's like I did I totally didn't expect that you could do that with with that sort of thing. And so a lot of the talks here are about people breaking into systems, and uh, and that's kind of like wow, I didn't know that you could you know break into someone's computer through this program and um, and really uh, you know it takes an understanding of like how the whole thing works and and uh, you know how um, how the technology works how everything fits together in order to figure out these different kind of nuances of, of how to use something and, it, and it's really um, there's lots of people that I feel fit into this that aren't into computers at all um, or into totally separate separate areas uh, that I still consider hackers like um, like, uh, for example, all these people that, um, you know, make robotics sort of things or, um, or um, you know, different art projects where they, they think about things a different way and, like, you know, um, and kind of hack society or culture and things like that. Um, with, with my particular work, uh, I feel like um, crypto hacking is kind of the same sort of thing where um, you take something like, a, like an algorithm and people think, oh, well, the only way to... Um, decrypt this document is with the correct password. And um, and so a lot of uh, brilliant cryptographers have been able to find ways around that where um, instead of finding the password, they, they manage to find uh, you know some sort of trick in the algorithm. And, uh, and it's really you know understanding how everything fits together, understanding um, how the mathematics work and uh, in different ways of, of you know trying to, I guess, get through the algorithm to, to a point where you can you know, do something that it's not nor normally intended to do. Um, just like with breaking into computers or, you know, like uh, figuring out how to build a robot or, or whatever. A long time ago when I was younger, I uh, started getting interested in cryptography, reading, you know, um, specifications about algorithms and trying to really understand, like, you know, how, um, how they worked, like how you could, you know, really take a password and then encrypt a file with it and stuff like that. And so I was looking at, um, at DES, uh, and um, I was reading through the spec, and it's basically talking about how um, how it's implemented on chips. How you have uh, different gates, and like you know, uh, basically ones and zeros pass through these gates and create all this sort of logic that ends up you know encrypting by shuffling around data and running it through lookup tables and all this sort of stuff. And so I, I went on the whiteboard and I just started like you know basically going through uh, the whole DES algorithm by hand, and I kind of uh, came to the realization that, you know, um, all this sort of information all, all comes down to, you know, electrons running through uh, gates and it's all, you know, you could basically buy a bunch of parts from Radio Shack, connect them together with wires, and, um, you know, throw some, some you know, uh, some lines high and some lines low on one side and then, you know, actually go through the whole process and you would end up with your encrypted data on the other side. And that's basically how, you know, computers work. It's all... Uh, just ones and zeros, electrons, you know, on the chip, and uh, and I kind of thought to myself, hey, well, why, um, you know, people kind of emulate this whole process with writing software um, to perform encryption, but uh, why couldn't you just, you know, throw this on a chip, or um, you know, create this whole logic circuit with just hardware you buy at Radio Shack, and um, and do the same thing, but at the at the speed of you know the electrons flowing through the gates and stuff like that, and so. Um, I guess the, the current work that I've been doing is trying to figure out kind of different paradigms for for um, running these algorithms much faster than what uh, people traditionally run them at. And, um, and I guess uh, a lot of people have, you know, try to, that are, that are hackers, try to get a really deep understanding of what's going on on the system. There's lots of people that, um, when they're looking at software, they actually go down, you know, and read the processor specs. Uh, look at how you know the gates work, and like, oh, well, what happens if you run the processor clock faster? You know, like, how does this really affect um, the underlying structure of, of what you're running on? And there's so many different levels, from the very top, you know, like being a web application, all the way down to the actual processor. Um, that uh, I think that a lot of people uh, in the hacking world really want to get that deep understanding of how you know everything works from the top to the bottom. And in that whole process, you end up finding interesting little, you know, bugs. It's like, oh, I wonder what would happen if this, you know, did this and this or that. And um, so I guess how, how I kind of got started with this is that 
Um, I was kind of interested in crypto back then, but I, I didn't have the resources to go out and solder together, you know, my own DES cracker or whatever. And um, and so I I spent a lot of time, you know, hacking computers and and working on um, I guess uh, trying to find software hacks and things. But eventually. Um, a friend of mine was uh, designing boards with FPGAs on them, and it was basically what I was thinking about as a kid. Um, that you know, you, uh, with an FPGA, it's basically like you're dragging you know gates, kind of like you buy at Microsoft together, connecting wires together, and you can pretty much create that same sort of thing that I wanted to create as a kid. But you could program it onto a chip, and then the whole thing would function like that. It's like a programmable circuit board. So. Um, so when that when that came out, I was like, "Wow, this is exciting! You know, I can actually do what I wanted to do a long time ago." And um, so I started messing with it, and and uh, throughout the whole process, it gave me kind of a deeper understanding about how crypto algorithms work, how um, computers work in general, and um, and so I I really think that the like crypto and breaking you know into software and vulnerabilities and all these sorts of things are all kind of stem from the same sort of creativity of, of wanting to understand the whole system and, and find ways to you know, use it in ways that people didn't normally expect. And do you think your, your work uh, could uh, uh, give birth to a new generation of computing systems? Um, I'm kind of hoping so. Uh, it seems like uh, right now the, the whole uh, processor market is moving more towards uh, Parallelism, having multiple cores in your computer, um, you know, GPUs that have you know hundreds of cores in them. Uh, there's all all these different levels of, of um, parallelism that, that you have, um, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you know 10 years from now most computers have an FPGA in them. Um, like uh, a lot of companies are thinking about putting software-defined radios on your on your laptop, and so. You have a single radio in your laptop that handles, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, you know, uh, GSM even, or um, you know, FM, TV, etc. Um, and there's no reason why we can't do that. Right now we have, um, you know, uh, chips that originally were multiple chips handling your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and they're all being combined together. And so, um, I, I could totally see, you know, like uh, you have an FPGA in your laptop that you end up using for. All of your, you know, Wi-Fi stuff uh, because you just reprogram the chip with whatever chips that you want, and then you could also use it for, you know, accelerating different algorithms. Um, but I think the the problem is that it's just uh, a lot of these technologies um, haven't reached the mainstream yet. It's just like when computers first came out, it took you know many many years for everybody to, to get them in their homes, and, uh, and there's a big hurdle of, you know. There aren't a very uh, large amount of people in the world that really know how to program an FPGA or program a GPU. So it really takes time for the technologies to be adopted. But I think that it's inevitable that eventually we'll have you know um, all these technologies somehow either merged into the processor or just included in the hardware that you buy. Um, 